So you have a winning product, you know it's selling, and you know that it will perform, but you're struggling to find these audiences that will respond well to your product and your ad and ultimately end up purchasing. So here you have uh, a couple ad sets that I just launched three days ago. I launched them on the 19th, today's the 23rd. So it's gonna go, go on day four here. And as you see, I've spent $461. They've generated uh, $1,200. In reality, this is about $1,400. They didn't track some of the purchases. Uh, my return on ad spend is 2.7, but closer to three in reality. And they're performing really well. They're performing very consistently. So if you're in my Facebook group, and if you're not, you should definitely join it. The link's in the description. You've seen that I've been doing some testing with CBO. And I'm gonna break that down in a different video, but I am utilizing CBO to test, so be ready for that video when it drops. But what I want you to focus on in this video to prepare for the CBO video is how I'm identifying these profitable audiences. So you can have a great product, but if you don't have the audiences that are gonna perform with that product, you're not gonna generate sales. And what I see a lot of people running into is they try to test audiences, but they don't have the budget to sufficiently test the purchase objective. And this is why I'm gonna explain I don't test with the purchase objective. Everyone starts freaking out. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna break this down for you. So I broke it down here on my iPad whiteboard. And this is what I wanna show you before we go into the actual real ad account where I'm generating these sales. So this is what I want you to understand. Let's say we have the interest gadgets. On the left side, we have add to cart or initiate checkout. The reason I put it or initiate checkout is a lot of us use, when you click add to cart on Shopify, it goes straight to the initiate checkout and skips the add to cart phase. So Facebook will not track add to carts, which is fine, sometimes it increases the conversion rate on your website. So I wanted to demonstrate that this will work for either add to cart or initiate checkout. So under interest, when I run the gadgets interest ad set, I'm getting a CPM of $19.28, a link click through rate of 7.94%, a cost per initiate checkout of $13, and I didn't generate a purchase, so I don't know what my cost per purchase is. Then when I launch that ad set with the purchase objective, you can see my CPM is $33.68. My link click-through rate is 4.92%. My cost per initiate checkout is $17.89. And my cost per purchase is $20.13. What I want you to take notice here is that the results aren't that different. And why this is important is because if you look at the CPM, it is way cheaper to test with add to cart. So if you can test something and get a lot more impressions in people uh, uh, seeing your ad with something that's really close to the purchase in the funnel, my belief is that it translate well to the purchase objective. So you gotta think when it comes to a funnel, Add to cart and initiate checkout are actually very close to the purchase. So you have your engagement up top, your view content, then the add to cart, initiate checkout, uh, add their payment information, I just didn't add this to the funnel, and then purchase. So if someone is going from that initiate checkout to purchase, there's not too many differences between the type of person that does that to the type of person that purchases. So let me hop into my ad account and try to make this a little more clear for you. Okay, so this is the campaign that I utilize to find those interests that are uh, doing very, very well right now. And as you see, over the lifetime, I only spent $50. I spent $13, 13, 15, and $9. And I identified very profitable audiences. So now that you kind of understand what the difference is between the add to cart and initiate checkout versus purchase in terms of costs, let me actually show you how it performed here. So those analytics that I showed you were completely real. So here we have this ad set and as I mentioned, we had a $19.28 CPM, a 7% click-through rate, and then a $13 initiate checkout. So while doing this, the thing that I noticed is that out of every ad set I tested, that this audience had a great click-through rate, um, the CPM was pretty decent, and if you look at the click-through rate for all, this is like people that actually clicked on the ad too, it just blew the other ad sets and audiences away. And finally, I had a $13 cost per initiate checkout. So the other ones did perform better in terms of initiate checkout, but the reason that I really thought this one was gonna be profitable is because I could see clear interest in people clicking through to the website. So what I did is I 
take these audiences that performed well. So these were the top two that performed well. Like this one got a $6 initiate checkout, a great click through rate. And this entire campaign is utilizing the initiate checkout objective. So I'm testing super cheap. I know that these audiences are performing very well with a initiate checkout type of person. And I duplicated them into a purchase objective campaign. And at this point, I felt much more comfortable launching them with a CBO campaign at a high budget and letting it optimize for three days because I already knew that they would perform. While this doesn't always work, there's always some pockets of audiences that you can get lucky with when testing, but what I found is 90 to 95% of the time, this transition works very well and it lets me test my audiences very cheaply. So when I have a winning product and I know something's selling, I can launch a ton of audiences to test with, with like an initiate or add to cart uh, objective. And based off the analytics I get back, I, I have an idea of how well they're gonna perform when I actually put some real money behind it with the purchase objective. So what this can allow you to do is have a budget to test with and then have the faith that you can put real money behind it you're gonna pay more for the CPMs, you know, your cost per click's gonna rise dramatically, but you're gonna have an idea of exactly how it's gonna perform with that different objective. So as you saw, we went from a $13 cost per initiated checkout to $20, but at the same time, this is generating a 3.58 return on ad spend. I spent $184 and it didn't track everything, so this is generated close to $750 off $184 in ad spend, just by identifying it. So. What I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna launch a ton more interest-based testing. I'm gonna test some lookalike audiences with that initiate checkout objective, and then I'll launch it in the purchase objective once I check out the data. And this is what I do, even while I'm scaling, I utilize that initiate checkout objective because it's cheaper, it's more efficient, and it lets me quickly test audiences. I can hit more people for a lower cost and then translate that into the purchase objective. If you're feeling a bit confused at this point of like how I actually structure this, make sure to click the link down in the description where I break down the entire framework behind this and like how I build out the campaigns and literally every single detail is broken down. But I've been getting so many questions like, why would I use a view content? Why would I use an add to cart if I like ultimately wanna purchase? And it's not that I'm scaling with those objectives, it's that I'm utilizing these objectives to test super cheap and efficiently. I'm finding audiences much quicker than my competitors and then I can ultimately put that money behind it with the purchase objective because I know it's gonna perform and scale quicker than everyone else. So I hope that this answered a lot of the questions I've been getting. I've been getting so many questions about this, including in my Facebook group. So I really hope this made it clear. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. I drop a minimum of two videos just like this one every single week. And join up on the Facebook group. Don't miss out. Tons of great conversation happening in there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Dylan out. If you're looking for something to watch next, I highly recommend one of the two videos up on the screen. They were handpicked by myself, so check them out. Highly, highly recommend them if you're interested in Facebook ads and e-com.